Son of a... Ah. Ah. Give it a little shave job right there. So as you're watching along in this video series of finishing a basement, you might be inspired to finish your own basement. You can't always just go straight to finishing the basement. There's a lot of houses that have some foundation issues. Maybe you've got some floor issues. If you have any problems with your foundation or your floor, there's a company called Groundworks that specializes in foundation repair. They're my go-to recommendation when I run into foundation issues. So check the link in the description or give them a call. They'll give you a free assessment to get your home stabilized, get your basement floor stabilized so that you can finish it, create some more square feet. So this floor is very unique. There's not a single control joint in this entire basement and there's not a single crack in this entire basement. You can see there are load-bearing walls in the basement. They're very easy to find because they're on top of footers. Something else that's a little different compared to modern basement walls and basement slabs is there's no isolation joints between your columns, your footers, and the actual slab. As you can see, we got our three, four, five triangle laid out on the floor. I'm gonna start at that end and work this way. So I'll transfer some measurements up this way and keep working my way down. <laughs> Let's just see how parallel that wall is to this in the line that I have now. All right, we're 114 inches. We're 113 and a quarter inches. So there's a three quarter inch difference. That's not gonna, that's gonna look pretty funky over there. You got a three quarter inch difference. Maybe we'll have to come up with a new line. Split the difference. So quick rundown of what I'm using. I'll be installing this porcelain tile here. It's six inches by 24 inches. Basically, this is a 12 by 12 tile. It's got the same square inches as a old 12 by 12 tile. Uh, I've got the ladder creek 253, clean bucket of water, sponge. Got my trowels right here. I'm planning to cut all these tiles with a simple tile cutter. Not exactly pro grade, maybe a little bit above DIY grade. Pencil. Tape measure. Once I get to the post, and you'll just have to wait to see how I tackle that. So what I don't like about these knee pads is I'm already Rolling off of them. Thank <laughs> you. 
So now I'm going to get questions. Uh, I don't have any pads on, Andy. Well, these ones suck. My knees keep falling off of them and they end up sideways like that. But I'm going to just try to deal with it so that I don't have any, any issues. Just mixed up another batch of thin set. Ready to keep on trucking. Alright, so I probably got some music going because, to be honest, I've been whistling like crazy. You get in the zone, and, uh, hey. Get down, get down that, that whistling action. I know a lot of people aren't into the whistling thing, especially when it's sped up to 20 times the speed. Probably sounds pretty bad. <laughs> Sure if you guys can see but this drywall sticks out quite a bit from the foundation wall or the footer and there's a little bit of a bump where the floor meets the wall uh, or the, the footer that's why I'm keeping this out a little ways my baseboard will more than cover that Some of you might be wondering why I didn't use an uncoupling membrane to put the tile over this concrete floor. Typically I use Schluter Ditra to put tile over basement floors. This old house has a different slab. There's not a single control joint and there's not a single crack in the entire basement floor. So I'm very confident that I'm not going to have mysterious cracking form 
in the next hundred years. If you do have a more modern house, a slab on grade concrete floor, you're gonna have control joints, you're gonna have cracks, you're gonna have to fill those control joints in, and I highly recommend Schluter Ditra. There are other uncoupling membranes on the market that you can use as well. This one here happens to be made by Dal Tile. What it's designed to do is separate the concrete from your tile. It allows for just a little bit of movement so that cracks don't transfer through to your tile. Another thing to consider when using Schluter Ditra is it takes a lot of extra thin set. You use a V-notch trowel to adhere it to the concrete floor. Then you gotta trowel in all the squares that are on the actual top side of the Schluter Ditra. And then, you know, you gotta have your notches in there as well. If you're wondering about the primer, the old cutback adhesive, I have a full video on removing the old flooring and scraping the cutback and what primer I used on top of the cutback. Uh, cutback is just that black adhesive that you see uh, in old houses underneath floor tiles. I have a lot of extra behind the scenes videos on Patreon just uploaded to this weekend. It's a great way to get in touch with me or ask a very specific question. If you have a basement that has cracks in the floor, that's pretty normal. But if you have any up and down displacement, you might wanna consider calling up Groundworks and have them come out and figure out a way to get you a smooth surface, a smooth floor to build off of, to put your tile on. You probably have some sort of expansive soil or a water drainage problem getting underneath your slab. I've worked in construction my entire life and I've seen a lot of crazy things regarding foundation problems and basement floor problems, even driveway problems. Remember there was this one job site that I moved to back when I was a superintendent for DR Horton. And this area of town uh, had extremely expansive soils. You couldn't even pull into a driveway without like a four wheel drive truck. The basements were all crazy. It was just wild. It almost looked like an earthquake had happened and everything was buckled and moved. I've also worked on houses that were on helical piers. So what happens there is the foundation moves. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about the, the slab on grade, I'm talking about the actual foundation. So what they do is they drill down next to your foundation walls and they rest the house on piers. Usually the basement slab is removed and a crawl space is installed. And I remember running a whole bunch of wire in this crawl space about like this. And I'm underneath it and you can actually see the footer. The old footer that used to sit on dirt, now like every five feet, there is a pier that goes down and a little, little shelf, a little, yeah, a little shelf that the footer is now sitting on. Quite, quite a crazy process to stabilize foundation walls. Um, again, I'll put Groundworks information down in the description. Next video, we're gonna see what this handyman hack job messy tile install looks like. I assume that the tiles have all popped off the floor because he didn't back butter. Shattered everywhere. Tune in to see how bad it really is. Well, I know I'm gonna keep getting more questions about the whole back butter thing and coverage and did you pull it up to check your adhesion and your coverage? Um, I don't do that. And every time I've done it, it's been just for the camera and I have tons of coverage and adhesion. So I'm gonna do a little sound test. Use the back end of a uh, screwdriver. You can tell if you got hollow spaces underneath your tile or anything, so. So as you can see, it's an identical sound between the tile in the concrete, all up and down. Um, so I have no concerns that there are hollow spaces or that these tiles are gonna somehow come loose. It just doesn't happen. And uh, I think it's just this weird social media talking point about pulling up tiles and making sure that you've got enough coverage and you back buttered everything. I mean, no matter where I tap this, there are no hollow spots. Okay, hopefully uh, everybody can come up cooler jets. I'm going to fill this area in here. I think I've got enough tile to make it all the way into the closet. 
where a lot of you reside. <laughs> In the closet. showing